Welcome back. Today I want to talk about a wonderful spiritual quality of persistence, which is very necessary if you want to enter into a lifestyle of meditation. I call it a, a lifestyle because we don't want to do meditation for a day or a week or a month or a year, but we hope that we're going to do meditation long term, which requires some persistence, which sometimes is seen as a long haul. It's like, I have to practice that long. But when you start to understand that you can awaken the dorsal parasympathetic system right away and begin to feel the four proofs, and those are slightly blissful, then you begin with bliss and you continue into bliss and you end with bliss and the whole thing is beautiful. It's not quite wondrous anymore, is it? With bliss in mind. So let's talk about persistence. It's such a beautiful thing. And there's a particular way that I approach it. I think you're going to like it very much. So the first thing I recommend is to go and watch a movie. It's hilarious. Bring your whole family, bring your friends, bring the popcorn, enjoy. It's a hilarious movie if you like comedy, if you ever liked Star Trek, you like some science fiction, or maybe you like to poke fun at Star Trek. This is a hilarious movie. It's called Galaxy Quest. And these aliens see some of our old sitcoms, what looks very much like Star Trek, and they think it's real, and so they pick up these people who are actors and expect them to be spacemen, and they're not, and they keep repeating a motto from the show, which is, and they do it with their wonderful alien accent, right? But they go, never give up, never surrender, and it's absolutely hilarious. So I was studying Shidari Nagiru, Aikibugai, a martial art, family martial art and the teacher of that art, Don Anjay, and his inheritor of that art, Jeremy Perselli, would go back and forth with this all the time. They just loved that. Never give up. Never surrender. It was a constant joke in the dojo. Everybody loved it. It was a great joke. And it, it's so true. And you know, Yogananda said, if you're going to get something done, whether it's in your life or it's your spiritual life, you kind of have to be a bulldog. And a bulldog will clamp down on something that it's bit. And no matter what happens, the jaw will not release. The dog holds on no matter what. And that's kind of what he was trying to say. We want to enculture some of that inside of ourselves. Grab on and no matter what happens, don't let go. Now, when I studied Aikibudo with Stuart Lyle, we were practicing once, and I've told this story before, we were practicing knife disarms. And so I would come at him with a knife, with a practice knife, but sometimes we'd use a live blade. So I'd come at him with the knife, and then he would knock it out of my hand, and a few times the practice knife went flying across the whole dojo. And he said, you can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean I can't do that? You disarmed me. He said, yeah, but you have to hold on to that knife no matter what. What if you let that thing go flying and it goes all the way across the dojo and hurts somebody? You don't want that to happen. Of course, no, I don't want that to happen. So you have to create a sticky kind of grasp, which is flexible, right? So it's not that you're just grabbing on with power but you have to also relax. And it created inside of me this kind of flexible, sticky grasp. No matter what happened, no matter how he threw me, I'd still end up with the knife. And later on, we were doing a demonstration and he twisted me 10 ways and threw me five times. And somebody said, no matter, that guy still got, how does he still have the knife? And my sensei, Stuart Lyle, laughed. And he said, yeah, I made sure he learned that. So if we think of a bulldog, we might become hyper tense and hyper aggressive. But if you can think of that 
flexible grasp. It's tenacious, but yet it's flexible. You have a relaxed tenaciousness. Isn't that beautiful? A relaxed tenaciousness. And I think that's a really good way to approach meditation or to approach yoga or to pr approach anything in your life. Because if you're going to stick with something, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. You're going to have success and you're going to have failures. And when you have one failure, you're like, oh, I had a failure. But when you have 10 failures and you have some success, you're like, ah, I had a failure. So when you're going to stick with something for a long period of time and you have some of that tenacity inside of you to stick with something, you're going to have failure after failure, but after a while, they don't face you as much because, yeah, I have ups and downs, but man, I am on the right track and I can see some successes here. This is working and that pulls you forward. And so it's a relaxed tenaciousness. You know that there's going to be ups and downs. It's going to fluctuate, but it bothers you less and less. You don't mind. And this is something really amazing that Jeremy Brazelli told me about Don and Jay. Don and Jay was m absolutely masterful. He learned Aiki Bugai before anybody even knew what the word Aiki meant. All right. Way before anybody had any idea of anything re remotely related to a martial art, which is a little bit soft. He was several generations before his time and he was absolutely he dedicated his whole life to it he was absolutely masterful and it came from continuous practice over and over and over again and he even said to Jeremy he said you know for the amount that I have practiced I think I ought to be a little bit better actually so that's a little bit of humility right it's like I practiced this much you'd think I'd be this good but I'm this good and that good outclassed everybody because he practiced this much. So it was quite impressive. Jeremy Brazelli told me he has forgotten more about martial arts than you will ever learn. Now that's somebody who is tenacious and has gone through ups and downs, failure and success over and over and over again. And he has adopted a tenacity and I'm suggesting a relaxed tenacity is best. And over time, going through success and failure over and over again will naturally generate a relaxed tenacity. You give up worrying about a failure because you know you can generate another success. I was talking with a friend of mine and I was learning from them about acupressure because they were masterful at acupuncture and I wanted to learn more about the body and about the different points inside of the body how to press them how to use that what it would accomplish in the body and I asked them how long did you go to school for this she said I studied four years and then I studied other things for another two years so Altogether, the cumulative study was about six years. I said, wow, that's amazing. And she said something really interesting. She goes, yeah, what else are you going to do with your life? So some people come to meditation for relaxation. Great. Use the heart rate variability resonant breathing app. Boom, you're done. Relaxation is there. The heart rate goes down the heart rate and the breath come together. They begin to sync or create coherence or resonance, whatever you want to call it. So doesn't, the word doesn't matter. It's, it's what's actually happening that it, that matters. So you feel that resonance, right? And now you're calm. You get a little bit of calm every single time you try the breath rate, which is the best breath rate for you, right? Boom. Relaxation is done. Some people come to meditation for peace of mind. Excellent. Keep using that. The peace in the body reflects back on the mind and little by little by little by little the mind is transformed. Some people come to meditation for enlightenment. 
And that's what we're really talking about, isn't it? The end goal of yoga is this liberation or this freedom, this moksha, this kevalya they keep talking about, samadhi and the realizations that flow over you. Maybe you came for the download phase, fantastic. And these things take a little bit more time. And so that's where the tenaciousness comes in where you begin to flow with my success and my failures. They go hand in hand because this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And so I give myself all this time to embrace this idea of relaxed tenacity. And that will get you through it. That will make you over time a master of meditation. Not because you're that smart, not because you're that brilliant, but because you stuck with it. And so eventually you learn from yourself and from your practice and from your study. You learn more than others will ever know. You for begin to forget more than others will ever know about meditation. Not because you're that smart, not because you're that brilliant, not because everything is absolutely perfectly explained to you but because you showed up again and again and again you had that tenacity and it's a beautiful beautiful quality and it's really about your heart isn't it you just begin to love it and you love it more and more and so you stick with it and that's the stickiness that we're talking about that sticky tenacity comes from the heart and watch that movie, oh my goodness, I'm gonna go watch it. So if you're watching Galaxy Quest, you're watching with me, we're watching together. So it's a, it's a hoot, it's just fantastic, I love it. It's just so corny and, and yet they take it serious. It, you know, there's, it, there's heart in it. It's, it's really, really fun and, and, and corny and, and just a hoot. It's just really fun. Uh, so watch it with your family, have fun. I'll be watching with you. If you want a link, there's a link down below and you can catch it right away, easily and effortlessly. All right, so hope you love this. If you did, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you next time.